am a psychologist. I call myself a developmental psychologist. Of course, when you use the word psychologist with people you don't know, immediately they think that you're a clinical psychologist and that you'll analyze them. And, or that you have very specific advice about their children. As a researcher, what I have is a very uh, deep knowledge about processes of learning, and I can give general advice, but I quickly um, um, put their anxiety at rest because I cannot analyze them, I, because I, I am not a clinical psychologist. It's a different training altogether. Uh, parents will ask advice about their children and for that I can give again general advice about resources where they can find the appropriate resources. Before coming to Carleton actually I went to Montreal to do a postdoctoral uh, fellowship uh, with a group in, in Montreal who were studying children who, who um, were at risk of school difficulties as well as delinquency. And so here again, a change of orientation because from adult-child interactions around storybooks, which was very fun and neat research to do, here I am studying children who are at risk, who come from very difficult circumstances because most of them come from very poor neighborhoods as well as very unstable families. So here I was able to take my knowledge of child development and then apply it to children at risk. Again, I draw upon that experience when I teach exceptional childhood because that experience allowed me to say, well, here are, most of the work I do is with typically developing children. But that experience allowed me to say, well, what I know about typically developing children, I can then apply to children who may follow different pathways. So from, from looking at very specific periods of development, I started thinking about children in terms of different types of trajectories and pathways. And again, that's very useful when we think about developmental psych in general, as, as children grow, but whether or not they, once they are embarked on a different trajectory, what happens to them and how they come back or not to a more typically developing trajectory. I came to Carleton ooh, some 20 years ago now. Um, and so what I've done in, since my arrival at Carleton is in fact wear two hats, as most professors do. So that research that I've been talking about continues and I've developed a lab and had lots of wonderful opportunities to supervise students who were very bright and took me in other directions yet. I will be teaching Introduction to Developmental Psychology. The focus in the class will be the developing child all the way to adolescence and young adulthood. I may touch upon aging a bit, but that won't be the bulk of the course because in, we do have alternative courses one in, that focuses exclusively on adolescence and we're developing one on aging. And so therefore most of the work and given my interest in young children, then most of the bulk of the, the discussion will be there. Um, I will also teach courses in exceptional childhood and again drawing on my experience as a, a school psychologist and that postdoctoral fellowship with um, children at risk of delinquency to speak about different trajectories that children can take. When I see uh, interactions that, that might be more difficult, for example, when a parent is, is trying to have the child behave and is just not handling the situation well and that in fact what the parent is doing is exacerbating what the situation is by giving more attention when attention should be withdrawn. Do I speak out? No, I do not. <laughs> it's sometimes difficult not to speak out, but what I've realized is giving support to the parents who do something good is oftentimes the thing to do. So sometimes if I go by and I, say, I can give support and say, oh, those are difficult times. Indeed, being a parent is sometimes difficult, is, is the type of, of comment that I would do, but not, not free advice on how to parent, because that would be uh, intruding, I think. <laughs>